If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video to reread the question. For part A of the question, what we want to do is draw a free body diagram of the forces acting on the box. Now we have the normal force acting upward and perpendicular to the surface of the ramp. We have the gravitational force which pulls the box straight down. We have the pushing force F that part A is asking us to calculate, but then we also have a static frictional force that's acting up the ramp as well. We can call that FS. Let's take a closer look at those forces over here. And what we've done is we've superimposed a Y and X axis over the object. We'll notice that all forces point on an axis, either the X axis like the normal force or the Y axis like the applied force and the static frictional force. Gravitational force does not point along one of the axes, and so what we want to do is break that into its components. When a box is on a ramp, the component of gravity that points parallel to the surface of the ramp is always going to be Fg sine of theta, and then the component that points perpendicular to the surface of the ramp is always going to be Fg cosine theta. Now we have broken all the forces into components that point either along the y or the x axis, and we can next proceed after drawing this free body diagram to Newton's second law. Now we're interested in calculating the pushing force that's keeping the block from sliding down the ramp, and we'll notice that that's in the y direction, so it's going to be useful for us to tag on y subscripts for Newton's second law. Another thing to note is that the acceleration is equal to zero, so of course Newton's second law would simplify to the following. Let's go ahead and fill in all the forces in the direction that we've called the y-axis. Maybe we can come over to the side here and do so. Notice that both Fs and the push, pushing force F are positive. We can arbitrarily call this direction on the, along the y-axis positive, and then Fg sine theta would therefore be negative because it's pointing in the opposite direction. We would also want to recall that Fs can be substituted with the following expression. And then the normal force can also be substituted with an expression. If we go back to the free body diagram, we'll notice that the normal force, which points in this direction, must balance out the Fg cosine theta because the box is not accelerating along our x-axis either. So Fn is equal in magnitude to Fg cosine theta. So we can make a substitution for Fn. A final substitution that we can do is to replace the Fg's with Mg. And then if we solve this equation for the force F that we're looking for, we obtain, and then we substitute in the known values for mass, gravitational constant, the angle of incline, and also the coefficient of static friction. Note that Mg was given to us in the question already in the form of 80 newtons. And so the force in part A is equal to 8.6 newtons. Now for part B what's a little bit confusing is that once the sled is just started moving up the plane the force of friction, the force of static friction that is, will actually be in the opposite direction. Recall in part A the force of static friction was pointing up the ramp but in part B the force of static friction is going to be pointing down the ramp instead. So we're going to have a very similar setup to what we had in part A, except the static frictional force, because it's pointing down the surface of the ramp, we're going to have as negative. Recall in part A it was pointing up, and so we label it as positive. With that small change, we obtain the following. We'll make similar substitutions for Fs that we made in part A. We have Fs equaling the coefficient of static friction times the normal force, and then the normal force itself was equal to mg cosine theta. Solving this equation for F, and then substituting known values in, we obtain for the force in part B, 46 newtons. Finally, in part C of the question, they're asking us to calculate the value of F required to move, and that's a key word, to move the sled up the plane at constant velocity. Constant velocity, again, suggests the acceleration is zero, the fact that we're moving now changes the form of friction from static friction to kinetic friction. So our free body diagram would look like the following. As before, we'll go ahead and apply Newton's second law in this direction right here. We'll again change the frictional force. 
this time of course using the coefficient of kinetic friction, we'll solve for f, substitute in known values, and obtain our answer.